This is a new thing. Um, so, whoo, little weird. I've been building to this for about probably about 16, 17 years. I'm Dr. Alex Lloyd and welcome to the new Jesus. I hope you're having a fantastic day or week, uh, but the thing that really makes it fantastic or not is I am right with Jesus and living in love. I'm not right with Jesus and living in fear, falsehood, anxiety, stress, etc. Not saying at all, if you're right with the Lord, you're never going to have any problems. It, it, you will. That's not I don't think ever what God intended once we were out of the Garden of Eden and not yet to heaven. But he did mean for us, I believe, scripturally, love, joy, peace while we're here, irregardless of our circumstances. Uh, does that mean no pain? No. Pain may be God's number one tool for getting us to a better and higher place in our life as we uh, progress, okay? Um, but anyway, um, the only way you can have your best day, I believe, is if you're committed and living in love in the present moment as best you can, you're right with God and committed to love, no matter what for the rest of your life. Okay. Let's take a look at our uh, postulate for today. We're not going to spend time here. We spent a good bit of time on these last time, and I'm always going to be referring to these because I believe this is God's plan, this one, for uh, your best life possible. And this one is God's requirements for love, which are basically the requirements for, for success, for your ultimate success. And I mean everything, work, health, relationships, finances, hope for the future, being at peace with the past, when things don't go your way, all of the above. This is God's plan for success. This is God's, uh, this is God's uh, guaranteed plan for success, this one for love. But love is really success too. So these are, in a way, uh, flip sides of the same coin, kind of like love and light that we talked about last week. This one are the, um, this is what lines the high road. We've been talking about the high road and the low road. This is what lines both sides of the high road to help keep you on the high road. Get a little too far over here, Time gives me a little bump. Get too, a little too far over here, grace gives me a little bump. Get too far over here, justice gives me a little bump, okay? And if you don't understand that, go back and watch the ones where we've talked about these in, in detail. And then this one, the four steps for um, your ultimate success, uh, I think everything's here, okay? Um, you live this way. You wake up in the morning when your feet hit the floor and when your feet leave the floor to rest your head at night. And these are always your filters. Number one, love. Number two, intention for good. Number three, absolute best. 100% no matter what I do. And number four, prioritize relationships above everything and invest in them every day. Now, I just did what I said I wasn't going to do, right? I, I spent time on those when I said I wasn't because we did last week. Please forgive me for that. Um, that's just me, all right? Sorry. So, oh, anyway, our postulate for this week. Faith, I've been praying about this for two weeks. Faith is the tether. You know what a tether, a cord that attaches one thing to another, keeps it in place, keeps it from flying off and getting damaged or lost? Faith is the tether that attaches us to home, to home base, to safety, to love and light and God. But is your tether 
attached or have you reached down and unattached it so that you could go someplace that looked good to you even though you probably felt nah, not really sure if I should go there or not but ooh, I want to yeah unattached let me go all right so faith is a tether that attaches us to home love light and God but is yours attached it is your choice. And it's your choice 10 plus times every single day. And no matter where you are, you can start over now. Another day, another sun does not have to come up for you to start over, be living this way, and have basically guaranteed success in your life. All right, let's pull the board in, and I'm doing uh, something I haven't done before. This is the board from two weeks ago, not the one from one week ago. Why? Because I feel this one is more foundational to what I'm going to talk about today, all right? And um, so if you missed last week, you're probably not going to get it even as a review, as I usually do. So go back and watch it if you feel uh, led to. But this week we're moving on, and I think this is the best jumping off spot for what we're going to talk about today, which was um, insinuated, at least, in the postulate. Okay, Faith is the tether that keeps us tied to home base, safety, love, etc. But is mine attached or have I unattached it and maybe not even realize I've unattached it or I forgot I've been unattached and going all over the place for so long I've kind of forgotten about that and I'm going to have to go and even find that tether again. I don't know where it is. I can't see it. I've gone so far and so long away. All right, so let's review real quick from two weeks ago. Here are the inward states of stress. Mad, sad, afraid, unsafe, bad, belief, trust, and failure. Failure, we acknowledge, is not maybe a true emotion or feeling, but there's so many that go along with it that I felt compelled to include it. And when we, when we experience these internal states, our first inclination in the flesh is to go to a habit or addiction something that feels good in place of something that feels bad, or to lessen the bad in some way. And it's typically instant gratification, all right? Well, what's the problem with that? The problem is that we do these things, when we experience this and feel the pain or lack of pleasure, and we do these things, we're doing it so that we'll experience more pleasure and less pain, but what we get 100% of the time is more pain and less pleasure, at least long term. And, and, we, and that's one of the tricks, is Satan gets us, to look long, gets us to look short term, right now, today, in the next few minutes, and boy, that sure would taste good, feel good, or something, versus what's best long term, which very often we know the answer to, but want the short term instant gratification. All right, so how much sense does that make? That's the very definition of insanity, right? And then 2 Corinthians 5, the love of Christ compels us. That's what's supposed to inspire us, motivate us. What we do and don't do is supposed to be because of that, not because of fear or the flesh or instant gratification or anything else. It's supposed to be that. And then Romans 3 talks about a righteousness. What does that mean? That means I'm declared right. I am saved. I'm in a state of grace, you might say, apart from the law. Not because I kept the rules well enough. No, you can never get there because that bar is 100%. Okay? And we talked about that with my wife, Hope. She had done one sin in her entire life as best we could tell, and yet she felt worse about herself than I felt about myself. And I had done a laundry list of sins all my life, and still was, okay? Why? How could that possibly be? 
we, we, we lived, uh, we grew up in the same kind of place, same kind of parents, same kind of church, same kind of everything. And I'm Dennis the Menace and still feel at least better about myself than she did. And she's committed one sin in her whole life, and this is at 21 years old, and feels like she doesn't even come close to measuring up and feels bad about herself, an extreme introvert, afraid to talk to people because they'll understand from talking to her that she is dumb or, or just not as with it with everybody else or, or when the opposite is what was always true. Well, which is it for you? And then we talked about the seven steps. Yes, I like the number seven. I was born on the seventh day of the seventh month. And also, seven is a prominent number in Scripture. So maybe, yeah, maybe some of these I've jimmy-rigged a little bit. They'd actually be six or eight, and I made them seven because I like seven. But a lot of them are seven. Okay. Um, so, the seven steps. When you are tempted, when this inward state and pain hits, when you are thinking of going to habit or addiction, kind of all of the above, all right? Turn the self-talk into God talk, the five-second rule, wait at least 15 minutes. Uh, go in the Revelation 1 scene in your image maker to the throne room of heaven. Uh, get with Jesus, repent, confess, ask, listen, can wait, uh, etc. Number six, 2 Corinthians 4.10, which is, Lord, I would be delighted to obey you in this. Please help me. I don't know if I have the strength, but please help me obey you in this. Turn immediately to the Lord. Do not argue. And according to Oswald Chambers, the Jesus will immediately move to the forefront of my life. Think taking the steering wheel, and his life will manifest in my physical body. That's number six. And then number seven, act. Now, if you can wait 30 minutes to act and act to the positive instead of the negative after 30 minutes instead of 15, then try to make it to 30 minutes, all right? If after 15 minutes you can act for the positive, then 15, if you can do it in five minutes, do it, that's fine, that's fine and take as much time as you need. But my conclusion is that if you go through all of these, when that hits, even if you choose sin, even if you choose habits and addictions, you're still in a state of grace because it's apart from the law. It's a righteousness apart from the law. It's about the love of Christ, which we are given freely. It's about the uh, my friend Todd thing, talking with the prostitutes. Um, Whatever hell is, people aren't going to be there because of sin. They're going to be there because they refused the free gift, love of God. Okay? All right? And so these are the things you can try, some interventions that some of them are um, from Scripture, some of them aren't. But there's some things you can try to change the channel. Satan is trying to keep you here and here to change the channel to here, all right, uh, and they and they they work well. I've been using them uh, in the church and outside of the church both for twenty years, and they work really really well. About half of our followers all over the world would call themselves born again believers, Christians, something like that, and about half of our followers would call themselves everything else. Okay. Atheist, agnostic, Muslim, Buddhist, uh, whatever, all right? But I would do this to try to change the channel from pain in this, in this channel to the high road, love, joy, peace, scripture, uh, the throne room of heaven with you and Jesus, Jesus in you, here and now, all of that, all right? And, that, uh, th and this is from several weeks ago. When I talk about emotional well-being, I'm really talking about, um, in, in, in a large sense, spirituality from the Word. All right? But what the world would see it as, I think, is more emotional well-being. But 
I believe there's so much overlap in those two things, especially if you're doing emotional well-being from a scriptural perspective, which I believe you absolutely can, and, and that's kind of what we're doing, all right? So um, it's taken me all my life to figure these things out and have revelation from God and my spiritual mentor and researching and everything else, okay? So my hope and prayer is just that these will benefit you and your family um, for the time I've spent figuring out that they do work for most people, okay? All right, so that's a review of last week. Okay, so uh, remember our postulate. Let me, let me do, the, do it again. Faith is the tether that attaches us to home, love, light, and God. Get that, get, get the picture of freeze tag, all right? You remember his little kid and freeze tag, all right? Or, or not freeze tag, but uh, just tag, all right? And there's always a home base. It would be a tree or a baseball base on the ground or something, okay? But there'd always be a home base, all right? Think of the tether as hooking you and keeping you to home base. What does that mean? It never. It means you can never be caught. If you're touching home base in tag, they don't even stand there with you, right? Because as, as long as they're standing with you, you're just touching the tree and you're safe. They're just wasting their time as long as they're standing there with you because you're safe. And even if you took your hand down, before they can touch you, you'd probably touch it again and still be safe. So what do they do? They give up on you. Or at least they give up on you while you're safe at home base and go out and try to find people who are not safe at home base to capture and pull on to their team. It works exactly that way spiritually. We have a tether that attaches us to God, to home base, to the kingdom, to the church, to believers, to, and it's called faith, okay? And faith is one of the fruits of the Spirit, which means I don't have to manufacture it. It's a gift from God through the Holy Spirit, his faith, his trust, his hope, his belief, all right? But as long as I'm attached, I have no fear. I can't be caught. I can't be turned on into the other team. They can't hurt me in any way in, in that game, all right? Now, Satan, even if I'm tethered to home base, to God, he may still come and tempt me because he's got some weapons that the other side in freeze tag or, or tag doesn't have, right? He can speak to me in my own voice and it tricks me thinking I had that thought and then I ended up acting on it where if I knew that came from Satan, you know, if I saw some snake standing up talking to me, telling me to go do this sin, there's no way I'm falling for that, all right? But, but that's not what he does. He's very, very smart, and he speaks to me in my own voice. I think it's me, only it's not. Now, sometimes I recognize it's not, but as long as you're tethered to home, to God, to love, Nothing bad can happen. Now, I might die, but that's not bad if you're living in love. Yeah, I mean, you won life. You go on to heaven, whatever, all right? But nothing bad, really bad, long-term bad, spiritually bad, in God's view bad, can happen if I stay tethered to God, love, home base. But, is my tether attached? or have I unattached it by my choice? And by the way, the only way it can become unattached is my choice. Satan cannot grab my tether and unattach it. God does not give him that power and ability. I have to reach down and unattach it. Okay? Whole different dynamic. All right, so this week, uh, we, we talked last week about uh, no, it was actually several weeks ago, about the fives of Jesus and Paul. Jesus, the Beatitudes, Paul, Galatians 5, uh, God's plan maybe 
for ultimate success and happiness, we all kind of have an internal minus 10 to plus 10 positive to negative ratio that would be in hertz if we did it um, accurately as far as science and measurement. But just for convenience, let's just say minus 10 to plus 10. All right, we talked about the definition of sin is to miss the mark. The anatomy of sin is repetitive love substitutes, which are those habits and addictions. Uh, what we're really talking about every week here and have been for the last year, I believe, is a bringing together and harmonizing of psychology, philosophy, biology, physics, health, sociology, and theology. And there may be a couple of others, all right? But it's sort of taking parts of all of those to try to fit everything together, most importantly including scripture, in order to determine who is God, who am I, what does he want of me, who am I to God, what, is, what about the past? What about the present? What about the future? Is there a God or not? Is there a heaven or hell or not? I mean, what's my worldview? We started talking about this journey you have to go on. That is a real journey, but it may not involve actually feet and going hundreds of miles away. It may be an internal, close your eyes, metaphorical journey. Maybe some of both, and that's probably more accurate. But it's really... Uh, a study of all of these things and how God made it to harmonize. And I do believe all truth harmonizes with Scripture. Now, there's a lot of studies that aren't truth. They're done in order to make money, and some of it is falsified, or they just make mistakes. I'm not saying there aren't any uh, positive studies where they make mistakes. They do. But all true science and Scripture, I believe, harmonizes. So... Here's what we're looking at, and um, here's home base, all right? This, I'm the worst drawer there's ever been in the history of the world, so uh, <laughs> understand that. That's why this doesn't look like home base. That's supposed to be like a baseball base laying on the ground that if you were playing tag, you would step on or touch, and they couldn't do anything to you. Okay, and you've got... Uh, here's the compass that you can't see very well. You've got north, south, east, west, all right? And here you are in green, or me. Could be me. Could be your spouse or significant other. Could be your children, your parents, your friends, co-workers. But I think it's helpful to consider all of them as you, just in different places and at different times in your life, all right? And here's home base. Home base is God, light, love, safety, okay? Um, and the red, well, the four reds that go to the people, the green stick person people, those reds are the tether, okay? So that's faith. All four of those are faith, all right? And as long as you are right with God, have committed your life to God, Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then you have a home base that you can go to any time. And it is, it is full of love, light, truth, significance, security, safety. Okay? The first one is love. That's the first domino in everyone's life. All right? And you're either programmed by love or a lack of love, which is fear, but it's also a lack of love. Because if you have a whole bunch of fear and a whole bunch of love, the love, the love will overcome the fear. All right? So love is the crucial one. If you have enough love, it takes care of the fear. All right? But some of us have way fear and hardly any love, and that means we've got some work to do, either manually or ask God to do it or, or both. So here is home base where there's love, light, truth, safety, significance, and security. Okay? And, uh, and I illustrated these um, on the separate lines. Trust is based in the present, faith in the past, belief in the past, truthful belief in the past, hope 
truthful belief about the future, and then belief is the umbrella that all of them are under. And then here's the tether that no matter where we are in our life, we have a tether available to us to, to attach and secure us to home base, which means we're safe and secure, significant and secure. All right, so let's look at the, the, the numbers. There's five numbers, and five of them are red, five of them are green. The ones that are red occur if I've got big problems at home base. Okay? So if I've got big problems at home base, then a circumstance happens that activates number two, fear, in my number three, internal programming, and then number four, instead of faith, I have unhealthy control, which means I've unhooked my tether and I'm not connected to home base. So I experience uh, fear lies, insignificance, insecurity, and I'm not safe, either physically, emotionally, or both. Or it can go the other way, where my home base is love, light, truth, significance, security, safety, which means number two is going to be faith, which means I am tethered to home plate and safety. Number three is going to be my programming. So number two, if if I have if my programming is love, light, truth, safety, number two is faith, which tethers me to home base. That tether produces peace. Okay? So number two is faith, which is my programming, which tethers me to peace instead of fear, and then when my circumstances happen, I'm going to choose love, truth, the present moment in love versus instant gratification, seek pleasure, avoid pain, and to control end results. Now, I realize that's just been really confusing the way I've tried to describe it. Okay, so just think this. Are you green or are you red? If you're green, then your home plate, your, your home base, your, your home is love, light, truth, safety, significance, security. You feel safe and secure, okay? Which increases greatly the odds that you're not going to have to go for uh, something to give you pleasure right now or to eliminate or offset pain right now. Because the love and light create faith, trust, hope, belief, positive programming, peace, because you're tethered to home base and your home base is safe and nothing can hurt you there. And then number five, if your home base is good, is that trigger does not kick you into sin. It does not kick you into pain pleasure. It causes you to be thankful and grateful that you have all of this and Father, your will be done. Lead and guide me, show me the best move. I'm gonna go through these. I'm gonna go through these five things and these seven things instead of just choosing sin and instant gratification. I hope I hopefully in 15 minutes or longer. That station is going to be changed, and I'm going to leave myself tethered to home base rather than remove the tether in order to go for a pleasure or pain that makes me feel a little bit better in the next few minutes, even though I feel worse long term. All right? So the green is if I've got a good home base and it's safe. The red is if my home base is not light, love, truth, significant, security, safety, but fear, anxiety, uh, falsehood, I'm not safe, rejection, insignificance, those kind of things. So green, I'm good. I stay tethered, tied to home base. I'm safe. I'm secure. 
That's what I feel. That's what I think. That's what I do. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. Way more than I would have the other way. But if my home base is not love, if, if, if it's more fear, selfishness, pain, and that's my programming, and because of that, staying tethered to home base is no great uh, benefit to me anyway, because my home base doesn't feel so good. But besides that, I see things out there that look really good, but I can't quite get there because my tether is at its... It won't go any farther. So the only way I can get to that thing, which represents seek pleasure, avoid pain, unhealthy control of my circumstances, or even sin, that thing, I've got to get away from God and Jesus, really, if I'm going to do that sin. I will want to get away from God and Jesus. I won't want to do it with them watching me, even though they're always watching me. So I will unhook that tether, and that happens when instead of peace, I feel anxiety and fear. Uh, wherever I am, out in the world, in time or place, all right? So if I feel fear instead of peace, I'm untethered, my home base may or may not be safe anyway, and I go out here for something that looks either like a pleasure or diminishment of a pain. Because that's the best I can do right now, as far as my feelings, emotions, body, etc. Where on the other hand, if my programming is good, I automatically, I want to keep attached to home base because home base is wonderful. I never want to leave home, home base. Now, nobody has it perfect this side of heaven or this side of Eden, maybe, but it's better than any, way better than anything else. And when I experience it, it, it feels way better than anything else. So good programming, it'll tend to be the green numbers, and I keep my faith attached, or the faith of God through the Holy Spirit, uh, to attach me to home base, and when that happens, I feel peace. If I have negative programming, I will tend to unhook the tether and go for pain, pleasure. So what's the solution? I've got to find that tether again and reattach it. How do I do that? Repent, confess, pray, go to scripture, see what God wants from me. Not just what pain, pleasure wants or what Satan wants or even what another person wants. What is Yahweh? What is God? What is Jesus? What does the Holy Spirit want from me? Because that is my best life. Wait on the Lord. It's the only way to have your best life. Okay? And you exchange your strength for His. You exchange your faith for His. It's not your faith. It's His. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's not your significance and security. It's His. It's not your love. It's His. It's not your light. It's His. It's not your safety. It's His power and protection of you. Okay? So everything we want, we only get if we're tethered to home, tethered to God, tethered to love. We only get it that way. There's no, it, you won't find it out here. Everything out here is a trick. Now, I don't mean you stay home all the time. God calls us to risk, to adventure, to get out there in the world, even if it's hard, okay? That's what we're called to, but when we're right with God, this tether will reach everywhere in the universe. When we're not right with God, it's about this long. And we feel like we can't go anywhere. So I detach that thing because I'm not getting anything great anyway. And I'm going to explore all this stuff out here at the four corners of my world. Well, let me save you some time. This stuff will never satisfy you. That's what we talked about the last two weeks that Solomon figured out with the most unlimited resources anyone has ever had. And his conclusion is it's all meaningless except for being right with God 
as the New Testament says, living in love, truth, etc. Okay? But we only get that not from trying harder, righteousness apart from the law, by waiting and exchanging my strength for his. Okay? So, and then the last one, number six, this entire one, two, three, four, five thing, which happens many, many times a day for most of us. And then number six is a critical moment decision. So we talked about that, that we're, uh, that we're tempted, and it's usually pain, but oftentimes the pain is disguised as desire for pleasure because if I feel pleasure, I don't feel pain. If I feel pleasure, I usually don't feel boredom. All right? So this stuff kicks me to habits and addictions for pain and pleasure, all right? But it always creates more pain later, and, and which is the opposite of why I'm doing it in the first place. But I've, I've, I've hit this, I've gone through these seven steps, taken the 15 minutes, maybe more. Now I'm back to a critical moment decision which happens 10 times or more every day. And to me, there's a real good analogy for this. When I was a little kid, RC, I was uh, I, I probably five years old. I was in the park, and this guy had a radio-controlled airplane. And this was a long time ago, so these are in the early days of that. And I was just fascinated because it ran on gas, and uh, he had to prime it, and then start it up, and I got to talking to him, you know, and then he started it up, and it made this great noise, this you know. And, uh, and then he had this little controller thing, and he let me hold it, and even, you know, it was, it was cool. And then it took off, all right? And I was just fascinated. And he was going all over the place, up and down and around and loop-de-loops and stuff like that. And then I asked him, hey, can you get it over to that bridge that was a long way away, and he wasn't typically going that far? And he said, uh, I don't know, I'll I doubt it, but let's try, okay? And I said, oh, cool. So he's, you know, doing it, and it's going over toward the bridge. And then all of a sudden, it starts going down. And he said, uh-oh, we didn't make it. And I said, what does that mean? He said, the airplane got out of range of the radio controller, and it's going down. So... Let's go. Let's go walk over there and get it. Um, and, and I mean, it, it took us a while to walk that far. But I felt terrible. I felt like I've made the guy crash his plane. But he said, no, no, no. It's fine. We're having fun. And look, it's not broken once we got over there. But the point I'm sure you've already gotten is this tether is kind of like that. This is not a physical tether. It's more like a radio control plane. All right? We are in... We are connected, I believe, to God. It says God is all and in all. Well, is, is the space in front of you right now part of all? Yes, it is. So that means God is there with you. Well, how about Jesus? The mystery of the ages. Jesus and I are one. I'm seated with him in the heavenlies. He's here with me right now. Holy Spirit, my very physical body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So scripturally, they're all three here all the time. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I can't get away from them. But in another sense, I have this connection with them, but they allow me choice to not be connected. Why? Because love requires a choice. This whole thing's about love. We've said it a million times. Love requires a choice. If you eliminate the choice, you eliminate love. So I believe God gives me the choice to unhook this tether that keeps me in connection, that keeps my umbilical, that keeps me where I, I need to be with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I, he lets me disconnect it if I choose to because love requires that. 
All right. So if this is if this ain't so great because of my programming and upbringing, and so I detach to see if these things are better. It's real easy then for me to get lost out there and decades later still be wandering around, not tethered to anything, looking for anything that feels good or eliminate something that feels bad. Or, or I may just become lost and not even know who or where the heck I am. Okay? On the other hand, God's solution is to in advance provide for us and pay for everything we need for life, health, godliness, everything we need. To do it miraculously. To do it at the greatest possible pain it could have cost God in order to purchase that for us, the death of Jesus before the foundations of the world. So God's plan is to provide this completely safe base, no matter what my childhood programming is, to give me His programming, which is always love and truth and for my best, and then to give me a way to tether to Him, which is faith, that is His faith that He gives me as my tether, and it's my choice whether to leave it attached or not. Right now, during the day, every week, every year, all the time, I have that choice. Do I leave it attached? Do I attach it when it wasn't attached? Do I unhook it? Faith, hope, trust, belief. Okay? And as those go... My thoughts go, my emotions go, feelings, actions, behaviors, health, usually everything else. Okay? So, it all comes down to when I hit the circumstances, do I feel peace or fear? And fear is also seek pleasure, avoid pain, and controlling end results. So, no matter which direction, north, south, east, west, whether I'm a foot away or thousands of miles away, when I hit the circumstance, do I experience peace, fear, peace, fear, peace, fear, peace, fear? Okay? If it's peace, I will likely keep the tether attached and turn to the Lord and go through this process or something like it and hopefully choose obedience to Him. Okay? If I experience fear, I'm going to be greatly tempted to unhook the tether and grab the pleasure or pain end result. The problem is that the instant I detach the tether, my faith is gone, and now I'm not attached to home base anymore. And I feel it. I feel that faith, trust, hope, belief is not there, or it's in the seek pleasure, avoid pain, not in the love, light, and truth, and God. Okay? So, tether attached. Faith, hope, trust, belief, tether unattached, anxiety, fear, anger, irritation, frustration, resentment, bitterness, not safe, not significant, etc. Okay? On the other hand, if I'm feeling that stuff, and am able to grab hold of the tether. Father, please give me your faith. I've gotten unattached. I've gotten lost. I've got to get back to you. Please give me your faith. The tether is now appearing again. Ah, there it is. Grab it. Attach. I choose God. I choose love. I choose the present moment. I choose faith, hope, trust, belief. I choose your will. Your will not your will. Okay. 
So, again, Satan has a plan to mess up God's beautiful plan of keeping us tethered to him by his faith anywhere we go so that we're experiencing this peace that passes understanding and that leads to the critical moment of decision choosing your will be done as Jesus did the night before his birth even if it's something I don't want to do and it's, and experiencing with that the safety light, love, truth, significance, security, joy, peace, etc. Okay, so where are you? Are you tethered to home base? If so, you should be feeling peace, at least as long as you are staying tethered during your day. Okay, so if you're experiencing all the things that come from fear, You've unhooked your tether. You have, you have either put faith away over there and chosen pleasure and pain, or you don't feel any faith. You, it, you've, un, you've unhooked it, but you really didn't feel that because your home base is not great anyway. So you don't feel a lot of faith from your home base. You feel more anxiety, fear. Well, the problem is that is a lie. Because according to God, home base is light, love, truth, safety, significant security, love, joy, peace, whether you feel it or not, all right? That the truth is, this is the way it is. And again, Satan lies to you through the actions of other people, through things that you grew up, through the 50% of lies that we all tend to believe from the latest research to try to get you to unhook this tether because it can be hooked even when you don't feel it because you grew up with fear, anxiety, selfishness, whatever, okay? But maybe you are tethered. You do have faith. It's just that Boy, it has been a battle and a struggle for you every step of the way, all right? Well, whether you are attached or not, the way you should be able to tell that is either fear and the things that come from fear or peace and the things that come from peace. And so if you are experiencing fear and the things that come from fear, you ask God for faith to repent, uh, uh, confess, uh, go through the seven steps and then ask for God's peace and God's decision at that critical moment of decision that you have 10 plus times every day. So the message today is that faith is the tether that attaches us to home base Safety, significance, security, love, light, really everything that you want, all right? But are you attached? Is your tether attached or not? It's your choice. And uh, a little post-it note, I added the word plug. Plug, plug, plug. Uh, is there one over here? Should be plug. Yeah, there. No matter where you go, the way I really see this, hang on just one second. The way I really see this, maybe even more than a tether, I, I, I think the tether, the tether thing is true, but maybe even more so, or, or at least an additional truth, would be our world of technology today. Okay? So if you need to program something, upgrade it, transfer, what do you do? You plug in, okay, and then push buttons and whatever, all right? Well, I believe that this tether has a plug on the end. It's not just a latch. Maybe it's a latch, but there's also a plug. And what, do, what am I plugging into? All day long, as I go through just a normal day, I'm, I'm carrying my thing around and plugging into people. 
plugging into the internet for information, plugging into TV for entertainment, plugging into soap in a shower for cleanliness, plugging into nutrition and medications for health, um, but mainly plugging into people and circumstances, all right? And all of that gets loaded into me, right? It also may go from me to them in certain circumstances, okay? But what are you going through the day plugging into? Is it, is it uh, fear, seek pleasure and avoid pain, okay? Or is it God, light, love, truth? So you both need to attach that tether intentionally to you by the faith, hope, trust, belief of God that he gives you through the Holy Spirit, all right? And by the way, all the good stuff here comes from love, all right? So love is still really what it's all about. It's love expressing itself as joy, peace, whatever. Um, but everyone I've ever known does this, and I did it too, and still do today sometimes. Everywhere we go, we're plugging in to see, ah, that feels really good. I'm going to stay plugged into this. Ooh, that, 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 ugh, that didn't feel good at all. And this one, woo, that was one time when I was a little kid, I stuck my finger in an electrical outlet that shocked me and frizzed my hair, all right? Some of them are like that. As soon as you plug, whoa, no, not that, all right? And then some, oh, let me stay here a little longer and see how that feels, okay? But you got to remember, right now, in a way, your spirit is imprisoned by this physical body. So to really live here in the non-physical, in the love, joy, peace, in the eternal, okay, you got to get away from just wanting to plug in based on the flesh and money and stuff that money will buy. All right. So this is not just an attaching or unattaching to the home base tether. It's also a transfer of information, which can be either fear-based or love-based. Okay. So if your programming is so negative that instead of hope, trust, faith, belief, you've got anxiety, fear, worry, unhealthy control, seek pleasure, avoid pain. Yeah, you got to go back and heal some stuff here. We've been talking about that for weeks. Or God can just touch you as you ask for that in prayer. But two things. Number one, make sure you're attached to home base. And the evidence of that is either fear, is either peace or lack of peace. And you want to make sure you're plugged in, but only plugged in to love, light, truth, significance, security, safety, hope, belief. Not plugged in to fear, anxiety. Uh, um, not plugged in to download these things. Although these are the things that get downloaded when we go strictly for pleasure and pain. This is what gets downloaded. So... We plug into pleasure and pain because we feel this, and then long term when we're plugged into pleasure and pain, it gives us more and more of all of this, which gives us more and more habit and addiction, and, and a feeling of being farther and farther away from home base, detached, uh, plugged into um, to fear, falsehood information instead of love, truth information, etc. So. Are you attached or have you gone out of range and crashed? And now you're not in the air anymore. You're on the ground. You're, 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 you're trying to find out, is your plane crashed? Can you get in it again? How far away is home? Do I even know how to get there from here? Is there... You get it. All right? So, you, you can never get out of range of God. David said that. I go up to the heavens, you're there. I go to Hades, and you're there. Where can I go? And, and, and the answer is nowhere. You're everywhere, all in all, as we said a minute ago. All right? So that's just a metaphor that does not live up to God, and very few do. God's distance is unlimited. But, but, 
It's still your choice, no matter when or where you are, whether to detach that tether of faith to go for pain or pleasure and safety or not. Okay? So are you attached or detached? Do you need to fix some stuff in your home base so that home base feels like something good that you want to stay around for? And, and, and that is the truth. So, if that's not what you feel, you've just got to get rid of some lies and falsehood. Because that is the objective truth, according to Scripture, all right? And the things you're plugging into, are they giving you love, light, truth, stuff like that? Or are they giving you anxiety, unforgiveness, um, I don't measure up, I'm not safe, etc. Okay? So, uh, this week, plug into lo love and God and reattach that tether of faith to your home base of God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the kingdom, etc. God loves you, and there's nothing else like that in the universe, and He wants you to have that love as His free gift and be in loving relationship with Him from now on as the perfect loving Father. What will be your choice? Have a great day.